Hi and welcome to Fine Lab Lectures. In this lecture, we will be discussing about the rotational motion. This is the part one of uh, two lectures. So this is the part one, and uh, we shall be discussing the basics of the rotational motion. Till now, uh, as I said in the previous lecture, it's an end of the linear motion. Uh, it's also called as the translation motion. So it's the end of the translation motion. From now on, we'll be uh, learning. Uh, the rotational motion as well as the uh, translational motion are together uh, but not translation motion alone because we know and we're experts in translation motion by now right so um, rotational motion what are the important things uh, that has to be considered in rotational motion uh, one the body has to be rigid so what is a rigid body? I've been mentioning it right from the first lecture. Well, a rigid body is uh, you know, a body in which uh, none of the molecules are loosely packed. This, for example, is a rigid body. So, uh, you know, any chain, I mean, actually the molecules are intact. I can consider it as a single system, right? It is not like... Uh, half of it I mean of course if I remove the cap it's a it's a different story but un unless and until I remove the cap uh, it is a rigid body right even after I remove the cap the cap can be treated as a rigid body and this alone can be treated as a rigid body right so a rigid body is a body that can rotate with all of its parts locked so this thing can rotate you know in any direction see with all of its parts, the parts are intact, isn't it? It's rotating, it's revoluting, whatever. The parts are intact, so um, you know this. Uh, this is a rigid body. H however, again, if the cap is again like, well, it will not make a difference. But strictly speaking, if the cap is loose, then this may not be uh, a a perfect or an absolute example for a rigid body. So the next definition that you need to know is that the fixed axis. So the fixed axis is a axis where the rotation occurs and uh, that, ac that particular axis is fixed by the name itself. So fixed axis is the rotational axis which is completely fixed and won't change during the rotation. So axis of rotation. Rigid body's rotational axis is what is called uh, you know, uh, uh, axis of rotation, uh, it's also fixed. So, yeah. so uh, generally, in rigid body dynamics, this is rigid body dynamics, you know, I've written rotational motion, but of course, this can also be, uh, you know, uh, this, this chapter will be only considering rigid body, hence, I can name it as rigid body dynamics as well. So, in rigid body dynamics in general, every point in the body moves in, in circular fashion and uh, and 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 the, uh, they sweep equal angles every point in this body if this is rotating here every point on this body sweeps equal rotation right sweeps equal angles in equal intervals of time it's like actually defining Kepler's laws but however uh, in, a, in, a, in a simple laws in a simple laws in the senses the body is actually rotating and so uh, the two, uh, any particle here uh, is sweeping the same angle in the same interval of time. So, well, um, so every point comes, every point moves through the same angle in same time interval, and uh, every point in the body moves in circle whose uh, But however, in, you know, whose uh, center lies on the axis of rotation. So, uh, all these points, any point on this rigid body, uh, you, you can take any point and its point, the center of that point lies at the center of the rigid body. Isn't it? So, uh, well, it sweeps up equal angles and equal intervals of time. And also, the body moves 
in a circular fashion and uh, the chunks and bits don't come off. However, okay, so the next thing is just like when we study linear motion, uh, here also we'll be introduced uh, to the position and the displacement and uh, the velocity, the speed and the uh, acceleration. So since this is angular in a very different way, so how do you how do I represent rigid body all the time? Everyone knows you right? think uh, awkward shape of body and uh, the line running through this. This is the axis of rotation. It's a fixed axis. So A O R, right? Axis of rotation. So for a point that is situated here, for a point situated here. The theta is the same because the center of both points A and B is the same, right? All right. So, however, uh, let's study something mm, different. I don't know. Let's come to this in the next lecture. So for now. Um, So this is x and uh, say a particle is here and p theta 1 this will be and this is theta 2. So um, so position of particle A, both are particle A, but however here in this case, what do you write for the position of particle A? This is S. So position of the particle is theta is what you indicate for the position since we don't have uh, I mean we cannot use vectors here, it makes no sense. So theta is the displacement here, the theta, not the displacement, sorry again, uh, angle subtended with the x axis here is theta, so I am taking theta is equal to s by r. Remember theta is always expressed in radians, okay. Theta is always expressed in radians. However, now since theta is equal to s by r, let's say that the body moves through through another other angle theta two. And again, let's take this as s. It's a we'll change, and we, uh, we don't require s right now. So displacement theta. Delta theta is equal to theta 2 minus theta 1 as usual. Just like x2 minus x1 we did in the displacement, so this gives you the angular displacement. So the angular displacement is nothing but delta theta is equal to theta 2 minus theta 1. Later, Similar to what we discussed in the linear motion, uh, velocity here is omega. Omega is nothing but delta theta by delta t. That is nothing but theta 2 minus theta 1 by t2 minus t1. Again, it is expressed in terms of radians per second. Again, if I if I differentiate this, omega is equal to, this is the average, this is the instantaneous. If I differentiate this, b theta by dt gives you the instantaneous uh, angular velocity, again expressed in terms of radians per second. If I differentiate this, I get alpha instantaneous d squared theta by d 
d squared. Again, it is equal to d omega by dt. And however, yes, since it is theta and the body is rotating, there can only be two directions, positive or negative, right? So if the rotation is anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise, then the, um, the direction is mm, positive and if the dire uh, rotation is clockwise, then the, you know, the sign will be positive, negative, sorry. So this direction, positive, negative. Alright, so, um, so this is the simplest way uh, and uh, you know, the same for displacement. So if you know the, uh, you know, the rotation of the body, you just can decide on uh, you know, the sign. Alright, so, so later on, moving on, so yes, uh, um, you know, this uh, angular acceleration average is uh, W2 minus W1 by P2 minus P1. So these formulas are very, very important. And the, you know, the and again angular acceleration is radian sorry revolutions per second squared. So revolution per second squared is what uh, we use to express angular acceleration. Okay, now we shall study the relationship between the angular accelerations or angular quantities and uh, the um, angular quantities and the linear quantities, okay? And we shall define or you know get the formulas for for body is under constant ang angular acceleration. Okay? So now perhaps before going there, I would like to ask uh, you to think about something. Well, whether angular acceleration or these angular terms or quantities that we just described and uh, you know the formulas were given, do you think they are uh, vectors? Well, yes, they are vectors. However, angular displacement. Uh, well, before I tell you the true story, you know, if the body is rotating. Say, this is the body. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the rotation axis, the axis of rotation. So, what do you for to find out the direction, or uh, you know, what do you need to do is you just wrap up your four fingers, four fingers in the direction. So the body is moving in the clock counterclockwise, and hence the extended thumb shows the direction of the axis and hence the direction if the thumb is up thumbs up then it's positive thumbs down you know the answer so you know the answer so that that is called as the right hand rule because i'm using the right hand uh, to determine the um well the sign of the uh well the sign of the body, uh, of, you know, the angular rotation, the angular displacement, and uh, you know, well, anything you can uh, actually find out the direction of anything, any angular quantity using the right hand rule. But the true fact is that uh, well, it's not a vector. Angular displacement, angular velocity is not a vector. However, there is a special case. It's a special case actually. Angular displacement. If the value is very low, it's too low, then the angular displacement can be considered as a vector. However, if the magnitude of the angular acceleration is too big, then of course it doesn't satisfy the vector addition, or vector subtraction, or any vector law that we discussed in the chapter vector, right? So it doesn't, you know, in, well, become a vector, uh, does it? So it's not a vector. However, given the value is very small, 
then it can be. Hence, we can conclude that the addition of two vectors or the addition of angular displacement depends on their orders and hence, well, they're not vectors, right? So, and also, moreover, the fact that we only consider or calculate those uh, bodies in rotation where the axis is fixed, we shall not need uh, actually the vector or uh, anything as such to uh, determine the direction. So we already have the plus or minus direction. We can use the right hand thumb rule and find out. Okay, so for now that's 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 about it. So we shall now move on to relationship with. Uh, uh, actually, in the next lecture, we shall discuss about the relationship of these. Uh, you know the linear and uh, and the rotational motion all right so thanks for watching and uh, the next part will uh, con will continue with uh, the the relation between the two types and uh, and so on thank you